Trying to see some music stuff that's really not polished. Um, only thing with it is, you can't set something to more than uh, two times higher than it normally is, but um, it's kind of cool. Um, question is, how did I make it? It's been a while. Uh, maybe I'll show you the simpler one. Turn that one on. So all this one does is play it and doesn't worry about up and that. Uh, if we play time. Oh, that one's busted. Let's try and meet, remake this one and uh, see how far we get. Um, cool. So uh, this is for someone on Reddit, I believe. So uh, let's clean that field. Um, and oh, I know. Had something recorded in it. That's now let's play and turn on that. Uh, uh, uh. Yay! Uh, but yeah, you can you can record and then you can just play it back as long as it's connected up to this logic. So you could put it in a timeline, um, put this empty instrument proxy into a timeline. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at how to make it. So um, first, I added. Uh, an empty instrument which I made, oh yeah, uh, for some reason if you search through the sound thing you can't filter it by just your own stuff so you have to go out and use search my creations instrument, empty instruments you because the, what I built it from had a preview which is not ideal, maybe I'll fix that at some point um, so this is just, it has no uh, slices to play, it has no, um, where is it, the oscillator, the oscillator is off so it doesn't, doesn't make any noise at all and you can use that for all sorts of things though. So we're going to use it for some logic. So um, in the sound gadget there are some outputs for different things one of them is note composite data um, if we plug that into a splitter we have all sorts of things volume button those, those are for the position like x y on here uh, and note id and um, consulting my notes down here. <laughs> yeah so um, the no the button is only really useful for um, so if, it, if you put it in a piano roll so this would be normal notes and there wouldn't really be any button output but if it's in row mapping then you get these these buttons and it's numbered 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, so you have seven numbers to play with, 
um, and you might want different things to play based on which button is being pressed. So um, uh, these are numbered in fact in the same way so if I plug the button into active port that sets which of these are sending output. So if I uh, go into the performance mode and play time so we'll just make that like that. Oh, it's, oh, that's still on. That's not helpful. Um, hmm. Let's try. What's happening? Oh, now it's working. Okay, so, um, oh, it's because I was pressing X probably. So X is 0, so that goes to A. Square, is it square? Oh, I know why. It's because this isn't looping. Uh, because it's just sustain or once, that, that goes through um, just these four bars, and then it just stops. So then all the logic stops. So if you go loop, then at play time, then it'll go through here. And just keep going. So then we can play different buttons and stuff. Uh, so we can do different, activate different logic based on which button was pressed in here. Um, now A is 0, so um, which means that would always be activated, which isn't ideal, but we have this, um, it's called volume now, but I thought it was just on or off before, maybe they changed the name of it, but it seems to work anyway. Um, let's open that again. Play time. So only when I'm actually pressing one of these buttons does it power it. And only when it powers it can it send out any signals. Which means even when it's on A, it'll only send out from A if I'm actually pressing X. So that's cool. Uh, there's actually only, only eight. So that's fine. So this is like all the buttons you have available to do different things. You can activate like um, whatever logic you want. This is effectively at the moment um, it's just like another way of doing this whole thing basically is to just put a controller sensor down and put it onto remote mode and then you just have direct access to like X and square and all this stuff. Um, but something to do in it. Do it a weird way. Uh, that's, what, that's how you learn um, how to do different things. So I hope you find it interesting anyway. Uh, cool. So we got that set up. Now we'll just grab this timeline. So all this has is a little bit of piano. Um, now first the reason why it's on a timeline and not on here uh, it's because we don't have things to reset it to the start and stuff like that so but we do have on a timeline tweak menu we have restart timeline so we'll just stick it in there okay so we want um, uh, we want it to be sustained so it only plays while it's on but we want it to play so we'll just play it when we when it's on A for now um, so let's see what that does and then we'll tweak it from there so uh, oh. mm -hmm. let's uh, 
use L1 and left or right to reduce the horizontal scale. Okay, and then play. So it stops where when we stop, but then carries on when we carry on holding it. Hey Pringles. Uh, got some puns ready. <laughs> um, but we want it to reset as well, so let's make it reset. And then... That's it. That's how you do it. Um, and I've got a knock gate for some reason. Um, hmm. But it seems to work uh, pretty well just as it is. So that's cool. I'll just make this a strong colour so we can see the wires better. So, um, yeah, so down here we actually have some other loops. Uh, let's stop time. So let's say we just want to grab that and make a something for the square button. I guess so. Um, I'd say you could probably just do that with the normal notes uh, in here. But this is kind of um, for playing it as if it was a sample. Like um, like this whole pattern was a sample and you every time you press it it starts playing from the beginning. Um, uh, and I sort of like misunderstood what you, was, you were saying. So if we leave those there uh then we can see them like lighting up and stuff so playtime that's interesting what's that huh That's very odd. Uh, uh, don't know what that's what that's doing. Um, it's like the first note is really. Oh, it's got that. That's probably it. Okay, play time. Um, now, because we're using um, doing it this way, this can only output one note at a time, so you can't do it with multiple um, uh, have like multiple notes held down at the same time because it uses this kind of logic. Um, but what it does get you uh, by doing it this way is quantizing to the nearest beat so um, if you record that will probably not look very good because it's too quantized let's have a look oh, one thing to remember is if you preview then none of this other logic will actually happen all this does is preview what's in this window, so you have to play time. Yeah, so if you want it to have a higher resolution, use L1 and up and down in here to have a better, more accurate thing. So. So now, uh, 
I, d I didn't say I was good, did I? <laughs>